We better check in with the Sydney Kings and their assistant coach, Tim Hudson, joins us. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks, boys, for uh, for including us. Well, back in in the league for the first time in a while for the Kings last season, how would you assess the side's uh, overall performance if you had to give it a mark out of 10? Jeez, uh, oh, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a quick one, but maybe give it a 7 out of 10. And, you know, I would say, uh, you know, uh, probably five early on and, and nine to finish in the home stretch. I think uh, the reality is, uh, given the fact that we were well behind the eight ball from recruiting from the from the start, um, you know, you might give less than a five out of ten. But you know, on all even playing ground, uh, I think that's pretty reasonable. No doubt, as you mentioned, a slow start to the season, but wins against. Cairns, Melbourne, Adelaide on the back half of the season, rounds 19 through to 22, putting some games together and to win 8 out of 28 at the the finish, to, to finish off on the bottom of the ladder, but only a couple of games from overtaking teams like Adelaide and, and Melbourne on the ladder. You, you finished the season, as you said, probably quite positively, and it was a good sign for the Kings looking forward to next season. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think... Uh... Took us a while to find our feet and 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 really uh, you know solidify our identity and and live and breathe our brand and and when that started to happen uh, you know all good things started to come to fruition. You know it takes time for a, a you know a team, a club, an organisation, uh, all in all to to really bond and and um, you know maximise that effort as a group. You know it takes a lot of trust and. And and uh, time to build that bond. Who were the one or two players that impressed you with their progress over the season, Tim? Oh, I, uh, yeah, I think it just goes along with the the voting of the rest of the league and the fans. In um, in Julian Kazoo and Ben Madgen, uh, both of them were uh, nothing short of outstanding with their their progression. I mean, if you uh, if you start with uh, Jules. Um, you know, nobody expected him to have that kind of an impact. And when he started to have that kind of an impact early, uh, you know, pressure builds, teams skate a lot heavier, you know, people try to take Jules out of the game. And I I just thought that was probably the biggest uh, impressive piece about Jules is how he finished the season, given given that attention. Nobody wanted to lose to us uh, uh, down the stretch. And, you know, a lot of those uh, games were, were were important. Their finals piece, so so he was very very heavily marked. So for him to handle that was was uh, was tremendous. Um, as far as Ben Madgen, look, he, he was very heavily overlooked, and um, uh, to see him come from outside the squad, work his way up, you know, break into a start in five, and then um, you know be one of our most dominant pieces. I think he was duly rewarded with a call up to the Boomers and 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 getting the Rookie of the Year. So mm. um, that was that was pretty amazing uh, for the two of them, you know, within the team. And, and look, given especially those dynamics, you know, you know, when when a team gets together and you're starting to try to build those uh, dynamics, it you know it it's a challenge. It's a challenge for the individuals as much as it is for the team. So you mentioned Julian, both great guys. Yeah, certainly. You mentioned Julian's input, average 17.4 points a game, 10 rebounds, just uh, little comers there with uh, certainly the rebounds and was in the top five for points per game. So a terrific season and to get through the, the season as well unscathed. Uh, the Kings turned over around 18 players throughout the season on the roster but didn't have a lot of injuries. I suppose some niggling injuries to, to certain players throughout the season. But what have you done with the roster in the off season? You've been able to maintain most of those core players? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, I'd have to say, you know, yeah. I mean, some of those injuries were, were you know, were fairly significant. I mean, losing two point guards, uh, you know, right early on in the season. I mean, that's like losing two halfbacks in rugby league. Yeah, that's you know, that's a that's a that's a, that's a very hard thing to overcome. But um, you know, all in all, I mean, we signed both of those point guards back because you know they're uh, they they're, you know not only you know, first class players with their first class people and and that's that, that's the that's the biggest thing that we're you know, we really look for. We look for, you know, players that are, you know, not just talented but, you know, they're great characters, they're very resilient, um, they're team orientated guys. 
uh, and, and I, I really think our our roster reflects those characters. I mean, you know, they're very very important things to Moose. Moose is very much a man of culture, and he's he's a great uh, manager of people. And um, I think when when it becomes overly infectious with with those kinds of guys, and you can't not but have great great work work rates, you know, th- through the day to day. I mean, a guy like Anatoly Bose. He's a super talent. He's, you know, been among the top scorers in the NCAA last year. But um, he's got a motor to burn. He's a very, very hard worker, highly competitive. Um, you know, the, the, you know, Alex Gines out of college at Nova Southeastern, uh, working with one of the, you know, the most well-known and, and, and respected, uh, I guess if you would call it, NBL development coaches, um, and Gary Tuell, who, who, who used to... Uh, coach at Augusta State as well as Nova. Uh, him and Mike Dunlap are, you know, a, a head-to-head there for what they've produced into the NBL. So he's an exciting, uh, you know, you know, young addition, you know, as well to the piece. Um, so yeah, we've just got so many good things uh, coming on. Top quality people, really hard workers that all fit that mould. So. We're chatting with Tim Hudson, assistant coach for the Sydney Kings. Season 2011-2012 memberships are available now, sydneykings.com. Tim, I guess it must have been really pleasing as well. We spoke about the losing streak for the side, but to continually get you know the big stadium there, the big crowds, the uh, rampant fans at the Kingdom, I guess in a way, did, did it surprise you at all to get the continued support despite the uh, on-court record? Oh, absolutely, mate! It, it, it was very, very humbling. I mean, uh, you know, I, I guess feel extremely lucky to be uh, part of such a great club. Um, you know, there was there was a lot of work done, you know, into you know into building that. And I think, uh, you know, the the you know the fans really missed you know having a having a team in Sydney. And you know, uh, you know, I'd like to think that uh, you know the. The, the culture that we you know we're firm on and you know trying to build a greater purpose within you know the community and what we're doing and you know with the schools and um, but at the end of the day that's that's a real credit to them I mean to come out you know you know with with so much loyalty I mean what was our average you know maybe six or seven thousand I mean that's amazing yeah. you know especially first year back so um, we're very very lucky I would say to have uh, have such you know great people supporting us, Tim. It's obviously been a big off season so far for the Kings. You mentioned a couple of the signings and uh, most of the roster staying together. What's some of the things that the uh, coaching staff, yourself, Ian, and the other boys have uh, looked at improving for season two thousand eleven, two thousand and twelve, with with the season not too far away? And what's what have the Kings been up to in the last few weeks? And what what are we looking forward to over the next month or two? Um, yeah, look, really. The, the biggest factors that we've been working on is, is, you know, building a stable base. You know, um, you know, as far as you know, Moose and I and our discussions with the team and you know the quality of people, that's what we want. We, you know, trying to find a stable base. So, you know, the guys that, that do have that work rate, you know, I mentioned guys. I mean, one that I did mention, Kevin Ratch. You know, he <laughs> a monster motor. So. Um, finding a stable base and the right kind of environment for these guys to thrive. And a lot of work goes into that, making sure that support structures are in place. Um, a lot of the work's done early so, um, you know, we, we can roll seamlessly through the season and just really put our uh, hard hard effort uh, uh, into the day-to-day. Um, there's been a lot of work within the within the organisation. Obviously, you know, there's been you know quite a number of changes and, and uh, you know the, the board's made their you know strategic uh, planning there, and you know I, I support them in their moves, and you know they're just uh, uh, working to, to to make this club the best they possibly can, and so we're all just you know working hard to you know you know in a holistic manner. You know we're spending quite a bit of time you know working you know on factors off the court as well as on the court because. Yeah, to to see long term viability, you you really have to you know work hand in hand there. 
Tim, on those off-the-court matters, Bob Turner, the news has broken the last week or so. He was offered a, a rejig role, if you will, at the club, but he's turned it down, so he's no longer involved in the club. Uh, first of all, were you surprised when that happened? And as a follow-up, uh, will it be difficult to lose a guy of his enthusiasm because really, in many ways, he was the Sydney Kings off the court? Mm, oh, look, there's no doubt Bob Turner's a legend. You know, he's a legend of the game. Um, I felt very lucky to be working with him. Um, yeah, it's 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 definitely a just, an adjustment. Look, you know, I don't profess to, to know all the nuts and bolts. You know, I tend to stick to my area, and that's coaching and, and work as hard as I can, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the decisions there, how they were made, how it took, you know, took place. You know, I've just got to trust in... in uh, you know that, that that was you know dealt with as best you know as, as you know in the best way possible, and it's you know it's the right way forward. But as far as Bob Turner, he's a legend, and yes, I'll miss him personally. And uh, he's he's certainly been uh, a great guy to work with, and you know, and and obviously uh, a lot of the work that a lot of things that came together in terms of the crowd support and you know things are in place is he's, he's been a huge part of that. No doubt. You mentioned, uh, we're talking a bit about the off-field uh, happenings at the Kings. We spoke to Trevor Gleeson from the Melbourne Tigers just a couple of weeks ago. We asked him, did they spend the whole salary cap? Did they spend up? He said that it, he thought it was important that you do. Did the Sydney Kings go to the end of the salary cap over the off-season and, and spend the lot? Um, look, we... we, um, look, we, we... We're not we're not at that yet. We haven't finished what we're doing. Okay. Um, we're leaving you know a lot of our options open. Um, so yeah, we're, we're yeah, there, there's nothing set yet. Um, you know that's definitely a consideration, but we may not. You know, there's so many factors uh, that are in play at the moment. Um, Trevor's I actually admire what Trevor's done. Trevor's gone ahead and and and. You know, named his team and got it done early, and you know they're working ahead. Whilst a lot of the other teams, you know, I think um, you know Perth's close. They've, they've they've got one to go, I believe. You know, we're on nine. We've got nine signed. We may sign just one more. We may sign two. You know, so and, and go a you know a eleven man squad. But it just it, it really um, we're just we're just we're really happy with where we are right now, and we want. We want to make um, you know great decisions, and it's more about you know finding the right balance for the team. You know, I really believe very, very strongly in the squad we have right now. Before we even you know finalise with our second import, you know. So when's that cut off? Um, when's that cut off date, Tim? When when does the roster have to be uh, finalised? Oh, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know that there is, there is any particular yeah. date. I mean, you, you can always bring players in and out. Um, I'm sure we could go on with nine and play with development players mm. and and take a take a player in uh, for each game. I, I can honestly say that we won't do that. We'll definitely have one more. Yeah. Um, you know, but who that piece is, I mean, we've got a number of you know people in mind. But you know, again, it's about you know. You know, making the right fit. You know, it's one thing to just say, "Hey, yeah, you know, spend the cap and, and you know get the best team possible." You know, like you know, they get the best players money can buy. But you know, do they fit? You know, um, are they are they a great fit? Do they complement each other? Um, you know, uh, Julian Kazoo, as you mentioned before, he's had an outstanding season. Well, we want to partner him up with. Um, you know, with with bigs that really compliment him, he's going to get a lot of attention. So we need a guy who can finish. We can need a guy, you know, who can be a dominant force, you know, around him to, you know, protect him a little from, you know, from being in foul trouble. So, do we need a dominant scorer? Probably not, really. Um, Jules scored very, very well, um, and especially again back mentioning the fact that he had to adjust so much and. You know, you bring in some of these other guys. I mean, Aaron Bruce is, you know, is a point guard who can score. Anatoly both both um, set records, you know, in the U.S. with scoring. So, you know, it's just finding the right piece, you know. Um, so yeah, so look, you know, we won't, we don't spend unnecessarily. We, you know, if um, you know, Moose um, always talks about a price that's fair and reasonable. 
um, because again, it's all about it's all about balance, you know. So. Tim, we really appreciate your insight on the program. Terrific to hear what the Kings have been doing in the off-season post the return season in 2010-2011. Uh, Memberships for 2011-2012.